Is this thing on? Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. And welcome to Tuesday's edition of the DCEU Daily. On today's show, we're going to ask why suddenly has um, the concept design of Ben Affleck's Batman costume been released by its designer? And then we carry on the subject to Sam Raimi the director of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, and of course the iconic Spider-Man trilogy, saying if he was offered a Batman movie, he wouldn't walk, he would run towards it. So we'll kind of start the conversation with Batfleck, then we'll get to Sam Raimi, and then I can talk to you about a little theory I have. So, they have released beautiful, stunning concept art of the kind of Batfleck costume that they would have used for, for his Batman in his The Batman movie. And it looks stunning. It's very consistent to what we saw in BVS and Zack Snyder's Justice League Snyder Cut. They've just changed it a little bit, but very faithful to what Michael Wilkinson did from the beginning. But why? Why have they released this art now? Now, you can say to me, well, it was the concept artist, but the concept artist can't, can't just release that without getting permission through the studio. What's going on? You see, there's been an interesting history here with this Batfleck movie, which was originally, I think, going to come, probably was going to come after, well, definitely was going to come after Zack Snyder's Justice League Snyder Cut, because we see Lex Luthor in the Snyder Cut revealing... Batman's identity to Deathstroke. So I think we would have had Ben's Batman movie after the first Justice League and then, or maybe even the second Justice League. Who knows what they were going to do? So this was definitely happening under, you know, the Snyderverse. And it would have been awesome. It really would. Was re watching Batman versus Superman yesterday. What a terrific movie. That IMAX version is brilliant. I love the way it changes. The ratio changes when it's the IMAX bits. And it looks so stunning on a, on a Dolby Vision TV like I've got. But anyway, I'm changing the subject, aren't I? The point, the point is here, people have become very upset when anyone mentions about Ben Affleck doing this movie because apparently he said he doesn't want to do it. Um, the, the film brought on his alcoholism, blah, blah, blah. It's not exactly what he said. A friend of his said, if you made that movie, it would break him. Mentally and physically. Of course, it was a huge movie. Maybe his friend, who was actually Matt Damon, meant they're never going to let you make this movie, so don't bother. Which is the truth, right? We're now in a very different kind of geographical landscape in terms of DC. Yesterday, Discovery announced that they're merging their streaming services with HBO Max. Don't expect it to be called HBO Max when Discovery come over. So Discovery are already being very aggressive with the platform of Warner Discovery. This means they're going to make instant changes with the DCEU and DC Live Action because that is their bread and butter. That is the number one thing. Superheroes is where it's at. I don't care if you don't like superhero TV shows or movies. That's what the, you know, the mainstream audience wants to watch and Discovery and David Zaslav at least know that much. So, the question is here, does Ben still want to play Batman? So, we know that he was in an interview on Jimmy Kimmel a couple of years ago when Batfleck, uh, sorry, Battinson was cast, right? And he said, well, I'm not Batman. He kind of played it for life, but he wasn't Batman. Now, recently he's spoken about wanting to move away from blockbusters and kind of do streaming and indie movies. So this would be a clear kind of indication that the guy doesn't want to do Batman anymore. But to be fair, he's never blatantly came out and said, I don't want to do Batman, right? That's important. But he has said about moving away from the mainstream circuit. So that's interesting considering, Ben, you've been talking about your Batman role in the Flash movie and saying it's the best representation ever of your Batman, and if they don't do anything to what you shot, it's going to be amazing. That makes us all very exciting. And I believe, Ben, because I've, we've all seen the on-location kind of leaks when the Batmobile is in a chase scene. It looks fucking terrific. 
We know that um, Ben was able to bring DJ and Zach's VFX people on board for the flash. That was because of Ben and his connection to Zach. So they're very close still. So this is an interesting thing as well. And so, as I say, the question is, does Ben Affleck still want to play Batman? Um, I think he actually does. And I think, listen, it's difficult because Ben's a huge Batman fan. He's got a Batcave in his home. So I think we know he loves Batman, but his experience was mixed. He's been very honest about the situation. He loved making Batman versus Superman. That's the Batman that he and Zack wanted to portray in live action. And they did it. So the Snyder Cut is out now. He's proud of that version. So after Ben said about moving away from mainstream movies and content, uh, a few months passed and then we had a weird kind of um, situation with Ezra Miller's um, Instagram. Now, Ezra's been very outspoken on his Instagram about certain political things, but he did screenshot um, an article saying that The Flash would be Ben Affleck's first, sorry, last portrayal as Batman. And Ezra on his Instagram story actually scoffed at this and he, and he said something like, yeah, right, or whatever he said. It's blatantly obvious that Ezra Miller doesn't believe that Batfleck is done. So this is interesting. So why does an actor keep on coming out publicly saying that he's done with mainstream movies? But as I say, to be fair, he's never said he's done with Batman. And I don't think you're ever going to hear him say this. Listen, what happened with Justice League was in the was a kick in the cods for Ben Affleck. He was the one who told the cast and the crew to walk off because Whedon was acting so badly. Because Whedon was under immense pressure. The schedule for the reshoots that he was doing was ridiculous and he couldn't handle it. Now, that wasn't the cast and crew's fault. But in turn, it wasn't a Joss Whedon's fault that Joss Whedon wasn't Zack Snyder, but he did agree to betray Zack and make that movie. So, you know, it's a, it's a double-edged sword, really, isn't it? And it's not worth going into that too much anymore. But clearly, Justice League really hurt everyone. Zack Snyder and Ben Affleck, you know, he must have been as hurt as Zack was because he really believed in that vision. In fact, we've got the unhappy, you know, Affleck meme when he was really unhappy because he really believed they made a great Batman movie, which they did. And, you know, critics were scoffing at it. That Martha moment was scoffed at. You know, Ben thinks that Martha moment's amazing and emotional and compelling. And to me, it is. And to most of you, it is. To intelligent people, it is. But to people who have no understanding, that it's not just the case of the mothers having the same name. The point is, he sees Superman as a person with a mother. Maybe that wasn't made very clear, I don't know. But I always kind of got it. Anyway, Batman means a lot to Ben Affleck, and BVS means a lot to Ben Affleck. It's a beautiful movie. Now, people, some people don't want to call it a Batman movie. I do. I still think it's a Batman and Superman movie, but I would put it in a Batman ranking, and I have on my channel, as you know. So Batman vs. Superman is a great movie and a great representation of Batman. Even if, just like Henry Cavill, even if you don't like what Snyder did with Batman, you love Batfleck. Most of you do anyway, right? That's agreed. He's a brilliant, older, rugged version of the character. So we must identify whether or not Ben still wants to do this. Now, obviously, Ezra Miller is very close to Ben Affleck. Um, they supported each other in the past. They worked together, obviously. We don't know more than Ezra Miller, right? So people kind of scoffing at this saying, oh yeah, why is he saying that? The guy doesn't want to do it anymore. Well, who would know better, Ezra Miller or you? So I respect the fact, if Ben Affleck doesn't want to do this, I would never push it. But things are coming out every day to me that that's not the case. That in fact, not only does Ben Affleck want to make the Batfleck movie, that it's in soft, development in personal conjunction with David Zaslav right now. And they have spoken. Zaslav knows all about the history and he wants Ben to make this movie. Now clearly you can't call this movie the Batman like originally. Matt Reeves took that title. But you could call it, you know, 
the fury, Batman, the fury of Deathstroke or something like that. You could call it anything. An inventive title. Listen, we've all kind of heard the plot synopsis for this movie. And it's fucking dark. It's insane. It's a movie where Deathstroke doesn't just kill people. He ruins Batman's and Bruce Wayne's life. He ruins Bruce's life. Rumor is he kills Alfred, played by Jeremy Irons. And a lot of it takes place in Arkham Asylum as well. Now, this is a wet dream for Batman stands. No one is saying that Matt Reeves the Batman isn't valid. It's a wonderful fucking entry. It's groundbreaking. As Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy is. That's not the issue here. It's not about, you know, Matt's Batman universe is in a separate earth. It doesn't clash. It doesn't hurt anything. I absolutely want to see this. I've always wanted to see this. And as it looks like, if Ben actually wants to do this as well, he should be able to do this. Now, as we know, Ben was going, Ben wrote this movie. He was going to direct this movie and star in this movie. Now, we know very few actors have done this gig. Now, we know that Kevin Costner did this with Dancing with Wolves and Waterworld. It worked out really well with Dancing with Wolves. It, Kevin won multiple Oscars for that Dancing with Wolves, one of the best movies I've ever seen. But Waterworld ended up badly. Kevin, unfortunately, ended up, you know, having an affair with someone on the set. It wasn't a great time for him because he was a hero before that. He was, you know, gold standard in Hollywood. And that's a shame. Now, everyone makes mistakes, right? But I do feel that it would still be the case that writing, you know, directing and starring in this Batman movie would be not just too much for Ben. It would be too much for anyone. So here's an interesting situation. Sam Raimi turned around and said that he'd love to do a Batman movie. Now, listen, I understand. I understand how the, you know, the marketing circuit for these movies works. Some reporter says, would you like, what other superhero movie would you like? He says, Batman. Or the reporter says, would you like a Batman movie? And he, and he goes, yeah, I'd run to it, right? And these quotes are taken out of context, of course. I understand that. But... He could have just said, you know, you know, I'm happy with at Marvel, blah, blah, blah. But he didn't say that. He said he'd love to make a Batman movie. So how about this? Sam Raimi directs Ben Affleck's Batman movie. I think that would be great. As I say, I am not an overly toxic individual. We're all toxic to a point when we're pushed that way. And if Ben doesn't want to do this, I, would not, I wouldn't even be talking about this. But since Ezra said what he said, I have been doing some investigating. I believe that Ben is interested in doing this. He has had talks with David Zaslav about doing this. Right. Would this be an HBO Max project or a cinematic project? I'm told that Ben would prefer a theatrical, although he's starting to warm to a streaming. He's not opposed to it. So I've always fine. Now, Obviously, David Zaslav, because he's putting together his Discovery streaming and HBO Max together, wouldn't mind it being on the new HBO Max, which I think is probably not, in, as I said, it's not going to be called HBO Max. I would imagine we're looking at Warner Discovery Max, right? Or Warner Discovery Plus or something like that. Warner must be in that name. You, the consumer, not me, but the normies must realise that is a Warner Brothers streaming service and it has Warner Brothers concept, content on it. HBO Max, if you're a normie, how are you going to know to subscribe to that? Because how do you know it has anything to do with Warner? The truth is, you normies don't. That's not your fault. That's on the company's fault. They, call, they put HBO in the title because HBO is a brand of quality. And I understand it. But I still think it was a big mistake. So, yeah. Listen. And I mean, like talking of Sam Raimi, I don't want us to overflow the market with Batman content just because Batman's easy money, right? We've got Michael Keaton coming back, and that's still happening, by the way. The delays don't change that. You know, the director, one of the directors of Batgirl has been posting some art. So this is happening. And that's an interesting situation, moving away from the Batfleck situation to what's going on with Batgirl. Now, someone tried to correct me on Twitter. People think they're clever, right? So I said, I've heard that Batgirl could still release this year, 
in movie theatres. So someone goes to me, look, and you know, no shade on this person. Maybe they misunderstood what I said. Respect. They said to me, I don't know what you know, but um, back you're supposed to release on on HBO Max, which I'm fully aware of, of course. I think everyone knows that. Um, but my point is I'm hearing that they're going to remove it from HBO Max and release it in theatres this year, or maybe even next year. Why? Why is this possible? Because they did it to Blue Beetle. They took Blue Beetle out, out of the streaming equation and put it in theatres for next year. Why did they do this? Because there isn't enough territories who have HBO Max. And even though this would uplift HBO Max, it would uplift movie theatres and make money for them in movie theatres a lot more. And you know, it's all about Latino representation. There's heavy Latino representation and inclusion in this film. You know, people are starting to talk. Why are, you know, why are the Latino things with Latino characters and like Michael B. Jordan's Superman of Colour going to be on streaming? That's not very inclusive, is it? You're hiding them away. I mean, I think that it's a double take personally, but I can see where people are going with this. So Blue Beetle is going to be there. So listen, the more I hear from my sources about Bakio, I can tell you this is a very good movie. Very good. Um, from what I'm being told. So I was very impressed with the Shazam Fury of the God Leaks. Um, more impressed than I thought I would be. Now again, it's a very simple, uncomplicated plot. It's for children. It's for parents to sit down and watch and eat some popcorn too. It's the only film, really, you can do that in the DCEU. Give families something, right? There's nothing wrong with this. I know a lot of Snyderverse stands are kind of, I hate Shazam, it's too light, it's too funny, it's like the MCU. Well, you've got your dark movies, which is great. I love the Snyderverse. I have to keep on saying this because people misunderstand everything they say. But how dare you say that children and families can't have one little franchise from the DC Extended Universe that's for them as well, okay? So, as I say, the Batgirl plot sounds absolutely amazing. And I'm not really at liberty to talk about it so much, but if you're a Batman stan who kind of watched the Batman, and I love the Batman, again, I have to remind people because people get upset. I love the Batman. But if you're a Batman stan who likes the lighter elements of the comic books and graphic no novels, this is going to be an alternative to what we saw in the Batman. This is what they're doing, you see. There's a dark version, there's a lighter version. It's not silly or campy, but it will appeal to young girls, young boys. It's going to be very, very interesting what they do with this movie. There's also a huge rumour about Batgirl that's been brought to me. Now, some people have asked this question and have predicted this. Where are we going to be after Flashpoint? This is actually a way where, for example, if they actually make the Batfleck movie, that could be part of the Snyder, that's going to be part of the Snyderverse. That won't be part of the central DCEU. So this is something else that's being brought to me. And sorry to stop one thing and start the other. A lot of things are being fed to me. So it gets confusing, but I want you guys to know it. So when Flashpoint happens, this is what I think is going to happen. Batfleck will vanish. Batfleck will be in the Snyderverse, in the Elseworld, not the central DCEU, but in a Snyderverse pocket universe. That's where he's going to be. That's not where Barry Allen's The Flash is going to be. But there will be another Ezra Miller version of The Flash right over there. Or what they could also do, because I have a theory about Grant Gusting replacing Ezra, what they could actually do is actually trap Ezra's Barry Allen with Batfleck in Zack's pocket universe. So then there's no issues. They're gone. They're not a problem anymore. And all of a sudden, Grant Gusting's the central DCEU flash. I actually believe they're going to do it. Wait, wait and see. So here's another thing then. Where are they? Where are they in Batgirl? Where, are, where is the central universe going to be focused on after Flashpoint? Because what you could actually do is take 
the people you want out of the central DCEU and say, that's the Snyderverse, that's the pocket universe now, because it was Zach's universe to begin with, and just leave the people in there that you want to. So that's interesting, right? So then what you could say is that Michael Keaton's Tim Burton's Earth is now the central universe. Can't you? Now, how do you work it out that J.K. Simmons is part of that world? I don't know, but that's what Flashpoint can do. It can change things dramatically. When you mess with a timeline, it's believable that anything can change in different ways. So we'll see how that works out. The DCEU may actually be set in the Burton verse. Oh, Keaton could now be in the central DCEU. So there's lots of interesting things that can happen. So watch this space. Now, obviously, by restoring the Snyderverse, you create another issue. You know, you need Jason and Ezra, as far as we know, and Henry and all of them to be in the central DCEU, if Henry's coming back, right? So how do you allow Zach to have his actors, Justice League actors, to restore the Snyderverse? It's a very complicated situation. I think reshoots, if they haven't done this already, don't forget, Andy was shooting for nearly seven months. That's one of the longest DCEU shoots or comic book shoot, shoots in the past probably 10 years. Superhero movies take about three to four months, five months at most. And it took a long time. That means it's a very complicated movie. It is. And I'm not saying it doesn't need extensive VFX. That's not my point. It's been delayed for a long time. And Andy hasn't even made any comments, which is odd. We'll have to wait and see a few weeks what's going on there. So the multiverse strategy is still alive, but they can deal with this very neatly. Now, I've spoken about this before, but I'll say it again. It's curious that now Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom and Shazam Fury of the Gods will be seen by audiences around the world before the Flash movie, because before the Flash movie was before those films. How does that work? It means they can name drop Flashpoint, but their world, Aquaman's and Shazam's world, haven't been heavily affected or at all affected by Flashpoint. Why? Again, we've discussed this, but we'll go over it quickly. It's because the Aquaman movie and Shazam movie were well received by critics and audiences. Aquaman making well over a billion dollars. And even though people said Shazam didn't make a lot of money, it made a huge profit. And all that matters is the studio is pleased with it. So there's still a lot of things we can talk about and have theories about this multiverse because it's still happening. And I think that Batgirl and everything I'm hearing about it is very exciting. I didn't really know what kind of film this would be. When they attached these um, directors, who I've got a lot of time for, by the way, I thought this is going to be very, very ambitious. Now, Batgirl is written by Christina Hodgson. So again, I don't know. Christina Hodgson, I mean, it's very judgmental and bad to keep on saying Christina Hodgson, oh, it's going to be bad. Look, she could actually be one of the best writers in Hollywood. Who knows? You know, just because she did Birds of Prey, and it's not one of my favourite films, or she did Bumblebee, which people actually think is a charming movie, she may have actually did a good job. So we don't know. We have to wait. So this is what I'm always saying, that the new projects sound really exciting. Even the Michael B. Jordan Val Zod and the Superman of Colour sound exciting. But where are they? The Green Lantern show is in development. It's a very complicated project. That's why it's taking time. I need people to understand that. Now also, um, on the Harley Quinn animated series, they have a kite man. He's actually gonna get an animated spin-off. From what I can, at first I thought, is it a live action spin-off? But I think he's actually getting an animated spin-off. It's gonna be like Cheers in the DCEU or something. I don't know if they're gonna animate the DCEU characters. There. I don't know. So that's very, very exciting. Now finally today, I just really want to talk about Batman versus Superman and its box office because I heard another hot take by a Snyder fan. I'm a Snyder fan as well. So let's get this clear. They keep on talking about this. It got to 850 million or whatever. It was close to a billion. What was the problem? 
A billion dollars was never the target for Batman versus Superman Dawn of Justice. The target was Spider-Man No Way Home money, and even better, Force Awakens money. They were targeting near, near on $2 billion for Batman versus Superman. Now, some of you out there will be saying, oh, Mick, you're wrong. I know I'm not wrong. I know this for a fact. Batman and Superman in their individual movies should be clearing a billion dollars, right? Let's be fair and say outside of a global pandemic, right? Fair enough. I still think this movie's going to do that, which is amazing, the Batman we're talking about. So Batman and Superman movies have got the potential of making a billion dollars each. So pre-pandemic, Batman versus Superman should have made $2 billion. So whose fault is it that it didn't reach anywhere near the target they wanted it to? Whose fault is it that it had a great opening and it had a gigantic seismic drop-off? Let me explain to you. The studio bears a lot of the brunt. But I think it's everyone's and nobody's fault. But the marketing of this film was bad. They marketed this like it was going to be an MCU action-packed movie, that this was just the fight between Batman and Superman. Anyone who's seen this movie knows it's very Logan-esque in its tone and its tamper. Fox were very honest in their marketing about Logan. If they had pretended it was going to be a fun, bright, colourful, inspirational movie, then people would have gone to see that movie and said, what the fuck, this is not the movie we were expected, expecting or wanting. And it's like BVS, because they didn't market it, honestly, because they were scared of the movie, then people went into cinemas and went, what the fuck is this? What's going on here? This is not the movie I expected. And it's what I keep on saying. You can psychologically prepare fans. It's like the flash being delayed. We were psychologically prepared to see it this November. Now we won't. That's hard to tame. But I think that was our plan all along. But they shouldn't have waited to now to do it, right? So well, that's one of the problems here, that they marketed Batman versus Superman wrongly. And if they were honest about the movie, I think the discourse over it would have been there, but very minimal. Because there is a little bit of discourse about the Batman, but it's not huge. And I think we would have been on the same level. It would have been fine. Another issue is the fuckers cut half an hour off the man's movie. So in places, it doesn't really make sense narratively, does it? So they were forced, they didn't want to, they were forced to let Zack do the ultimate edition, which was his original movie. It's a much better movie, right? I mean, I still think the theatrical cut's good, it's a good movie. But there are missing pieces. I mean, I filled in the blanks, but not everyone can do that, right? And why should we have to? So that's a director's cut of BVS because of the studio. That's a director's cut... But there's an extended edition of the first Suicide Squad film directed by David Ayer, which I'll be watching later on today. I'll be watching that extended edition because I love it. And there's, an there's a director's cut of Zack Snyder's Justice League. And what they did there was worse than in the other two movies, right? So they kept on making this mistake. Instead of saying from the very beginning, you know what, Zack? We have created differences. We've got to go our own separate ways and let us do what we want with this franchise. And it would have been fine if they did it earlier on. So Batman versus Superman not making the target of nearly $2 billion, which was very, very reachable, was the studio's fault. Yes, it's very different. It's very indie style. But if you actually prepare the audience and the consumer for this, I think people would have embraced it just like they've embraced Matt Reeves, the Batman. This has been the DCEU Daily here on Movies TV Mad with me, Mick. Your host with the most, just ask your girlfriends and your wives. Like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss this perfection. And I'll see you again later on. Until then, goodbye, au revoir, Alfie the Zane. See you again soon.